Hey, I've always been into simulation games. I know you are too, that's why you're here. I love flying, I love driving, I love racing. Heck, I'll even drive a truck. And there are so many titles out there that are so amazing that can provide the absolute best simulation, like Flight Simulator 2020. The problem is that's just a piece of software. Those guys put a lot of work in it and it provides a lot of opportunity and it simulates a lot. But how you play it matters a lot. What is your environment? What type of screens? What type of PC? What type of peripherals do you use? Do you have controllers? Do you like to use a mouse? Or are you one of those Xbox controller kind of guys? But when all that is not enough, and you try to take simulation to the next level, you start to build something like this. What I'm going to show you today is my journey of building flight panels for Flight Simulator. I basically treated it like a middle school diorama project. I thought about what is the most realistic thing I can build with the items that I had. I started with paper, I went to cardboard, cardboard went to plastic, plastic went to plywood, plywood to composite board, and next thing I know, I bought a 3D printer. That's right, guys. Luckily, I'm trained in a little bit of CAD, so I was able to build my custom-made flight panel and actually print it. So let me take you along and let me show you how I did it. Let's start from the beginning. Because, as I mentioned earlier, my initial versions weren't necessarily professional or of the high quality that I desired or expected. My sole objective was to try to figure out how to arrange everything in a manner that would create the most immersive experience possible. I experimented with a different layout, trying to achieve the utmost realism. You will witness me going through some variations attempting to determine the best way to arrange all of the controls and peripherals. I'm trying to locate and fit the Logitech panels and the Alpha yoke. While additional items like the Steam Deck controller and extra tablets were secondary, they were equally important. I went through several versions and ultimately I made the decision to construct a panel out of wood. Not just once, but twice. That's right. However, with each attempt, I got better and better. I utilized proper tools, I started taking accurate measurements, and I learned to measure twice and, well, you know, cut three times. As you can see in this time-lapse footage, I acquired new skills and emerged unscathed. Finally, I assembled the panel, and to my surprise, it turned out quite well, especially for what we call the A side, the side that everyone sees and is being touched. All the peripherals fit nicely, but when zooming in, yeah, you might notice some gaps and imperfections. But, you know, overall, at least everything was properly attached. Sure, I encountered a few cracks along the way. There were some components that maybe didn't fit, necessitating drilling of extra holes. But listen, the point is, I did my best that I could with what I had, and I was proud of it. But, as you can see, some things on the B side weren't as refined as I would have liked it. Every time I needed to make a change or encountered an issue, I added more screws, compounding the complexity. Nonetheless, I must say, it looked pretty remarkable, especially when mounted in the cockpit. It felt incredibly satisfying and pretty believable, but that was not the end of the journey. So no sooner had I finished the project, I found myself back at the drawing board, quite literally. There are a couple issues I would have done different. Uh, you know, especially my knees are a bit tight. This throttle sticking out needs to go further in, but it's having a little conflict in the back. Other than that, yeah, I would just swap this out. I think I would put this over there so it doesn't conflict with my rig. Move this over here and it'll be a little more easy to the hand, actually. I returned to Photoshop and I meticulously measured every peripheral and device until I created little templates for each and one of them. I measured and measured. I even measured my knees and my hands. The final design resembled what I had constructed in wood. Knowing that it would be 3D printed, I started adding refinements and details. And when I say details, I mean realistic Garmin faceplates. I literally had to design them from scratch. Incorporating subtle angles on the panel to give me a little bit more of an ergonomic experience. Of course, when you're designing something from scratch, precision is paramount. Within CAD, I was able to achieve that accuracy and eliminate most of the silly mistakes that I usually make. Finally, we had a model ready for printing. For those who are new to 3D printing, let me tell you, it is not a one and done process. 3D printers are delicate machines and you will encounter numerous mistakes along the way. 
This undertaking demanded immense patience, involving plenty of trial and error, and I even went back to the data, rebuilding it a couple of times. I must have constructed this panel at least three times before obtaining the final pieces. At one point, I felt confident enough to start assembling what I had, and it was truly a gratifying moment. The finished product was actually made of plastic, and it felt like something you would buy at the store. The only challenge was how to glue it and fasten it together. There you have it folks, fully assembled and working. I cannot put into words the feeling of witnessing it all come together. From dream to reality, every item fit perfectly, every screw aligned, the touch screens worked flawlessly, and the bezels felt authentic. I even added under panel lighting. LED lights for nighttime flying, of course. Behold the amazing glow. As I mentioned, everything was measured meticulously. I ensured that there was enough room for my feet this time. Being a bit clumsy, I might have broken a piece or two, but uh, hey, I glued it back together and I soldiered on. I took great care in managing the wire. I know it may appear messy, but believe me when I tell you, this represents good cable management to me. I created brackets for the USB holder and guides for all the cables and finally wrapped it up. So ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Weeks of CAD work, weeks of printing, and countless days of assembly. Finally, together. And as I tested it, everything worked and fit perfectly. It exceeded my wildest dreams. The panel fits seamlessly over the honeycomb yoke, which serves as the foundation for this entire project. The SIM panels from Logitech fit perfectly and are easy to operate. The touchscreen fits and functions flawlessly. And if you're interested in learning how I connected that fourth screen to my PC, just check the link above for a video where I explain this whole process. This time the Cessna throttles were much more comfortable to handle and did not hit anything on the backside. I truly, truly wish you could experience this for yourselves. In fact, I highly encourage you to go out there and try building something similar. That's right, start small so you don't get overwhelmed. Begin with simple steps. There are numerous resources available to help you along the way. Here you are on YouTube watching me build my own panel. So yes, I might have some prior experience in professional training and I might possess some skills that made this process easier, but I had to research many, many of the steps myself. Gradually, I figured it all out. For anything you wish to pursue, I guarantee there's someone out there that is willing and ready to teach you. So with that said, boys and girls, go out there and build something awesome. And I'll see you in the friendly skies. I love you all.